Greetings. Welcome to worship with Madras United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Gigi Seekinen. I hope that this is my last week of preparing this video without my video editing software. I have uh, some, some new equipment and now it's just a matter of getting it uh, operational. So thank you for bearing with me. But because of that, this will be a shorter video. However, I did want to uh, make sure during this Advent season that you, those of you who, follow, who worship with us on YouTube could follow along with our scripture and our weekly message. And our scripture today, I'm actually reading, uh, it's included in the United Methodist Hymnal, it's number 208. It's the Canticle of Zechariah. If you want to find it in your Bible, it's Luke chapter 1, verses 68 through 79. This is also, uh, a canticle is a song. Uh, it's also referred to as the Benedictus, because the first word in Latin is, is the Latin word for blessed. So hear this song, if you will, of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to set the chosen people free. The Lord has raised up for us a mighty savior from the house of David. Through the holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears and to remember the holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship without fear, holy and righteous in the Lord's sight, all the days of our life. And you, child, should be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's, knowledge, God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet in the way of peace. This ends our reading. We are in the middle of a series that we're calling There's a Song in the Air after the hymn titled um, by Josiah Holland, and we're focusing on the songs that appear in our Advent scriptures. The, if you'd like to backtrack and start at the beginning, last week's video talked about Psalm 25 and its encouragement for those who wait on the Lord. And today we encountered Zechariah's song. But to really appreciate his song, we need to remember the backstory. When we think of Zechariah, it's often his silence and not his song that come to mind. I've often thought that Zechariah's nine months of angel-enforced silence was a pretty harsh consequence for Zechariah letting his pragmatism get the better of him. Mary, uh, it, by contrast, uh, in her encounter in the same chapter of Luke, of Luke's gospel, Mary expressed confusion and was offered reassurance in her encounter with Gabriel. But still, I suspect that each of them received what they needed. Luke opens his gospel with a very brief introduction and then dives into the story of Zechariah, a priest who has an encounter with the angel Gabriel while his priestly division was serving, was taking their turn serving in the temple. And Luke is careful to tell us that Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth were righteous um, and blameless in keeping the commandments. That's a, a pretty high bar. They were also childless and advanced in years. When Gabriel announces that Elizabeth will have a son, Zechariah points out the obvious. They're too old to have children. And for his disbelief, he spends the next nine months speechless. Now, we could have a bit of fun imagining what those nine months may have been like as Elizabeth was able to voice her thoughts, uh, but Zachariah was unable to respond. But there's some indication that Zachariah, um, that he couldn't hear either. So perhaps Elizabeth didn't get much amusement from the situation after all. Either way, 
nine months is a very long time to go without being able to express one's thoughts and opinions. I suspect it gave Zechariah plenty of time to listen to God. Now, it's interesting to know that Zechariah's name translates as God Remembered. Before Zechariah's encounter with Gabriel, his name could be considered a bit ironic. He and Elizabeth, if we know, have lived faithfully for a lifetime, and yet God had not remembered them, at least not by blessing them with children, which were so important in ancient Near Eastern culture. It wasn't only Zechariah's personal life that was challenging. He lived in a land subject to Roman occupation. Scholar Amy Jill Levine points out that when Luke writes about uh, writes that these events occurred during the rule of King Herod, he is reminding readers of a king who was brutal enough to kill his own sons, his wife, and two of his wife's relations. Zechariah had plenty of reason to fear that God had not remembered. So to remain faithful day after day and year after year under those circumstances is no small thing. So as much as I appreciate the humor of Zechariah's story, it doesn't lessen my appreciation for his faithfulness. As the story goes, Elizabeth gives birth to a son, and everyone expected the baby to be named Zechariah after his father. Instead, Elizabeth says the, boy, the, the boy's name will be John, which means God's gift or God's, God is gracious, a fitting name under the circumstances. It's only after Zechariah agrees that the baby is to be named John that his speech is restored. Now, imagine, if you will, what you would say if you could suddenly speak again after nine months of silence. Zechariah, for his part, burst into a song of praise and prophecy that has reverberated through the generations. His song celebrates a God who remembers, a God of mercy and compassion, a God who frees people from oppression and injustice, a God who frees people from their sins. Zechariah celebrates God's actions in the past and in the future. God's care for individual humans and for humankind. Then Zechariah offers a prophecy as to the role of his own son, John, who will be John the Baptist, who will prepare the way for the Lord. Zechariah's song is a treasure trove, but my favorite verse is the last one. Zechariah, always faithful, is now hopeful as he declares, in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the path of peace. Scholar N.T. Wright in his book, Luke for Everyone, suggests, and here's a quote, often it's the old people the ones who cherish old memories and imaginations, who keep alive the rumor of hope. I th he was writing that about, uh, as he was writing about Zechariah, and I think it's uh, so appropriate. Now, uh, I'm not saying that we're old, but let us be the people who keep the rumor of hope alive. Because we are also a people who sit in darkness and walk in the shadow of death as evidenced by uh, news events of the last couple of weeks. As I am recording this, a new COVID variant of concern has been identified. There has been a tragic shooting in Michigan. And there's currently a Supreme Court case tied to a deeply divisive and passionately debated issue. These days, when we are weary and wary we need the hope of Zechariah's song. The dawn breaks upon us. There is always light breaking through, even on the shortest December days, in the most trying of circumstances, 
in the muddle of our own sinfulness. Christ is our light and our hope. I think we intuitively crave the light. We see this, or I've seen this in, um, in many uh, people have posted pictures on their Facebook page of sunrises and sunsets, things that, images that highlight the light. We put up Christmas lights and sit around in, the, in darkened rooms to enjoy the lights on our Christmas trees. Sometimes we light a single candle as we pray. I hope all of these um, tangible manifestations of light will help you this season to remember the light of Christ. And I hope that we will use this season to celebrate that light and to share hope with others through our speaking and our silence, our doing and our being, our giving and our receiving. In this way too, we will walk in the path of peace. Amen. Friends, thank you for worshiping with me, and I look forward to, to joining you again next week. Go in peace.